Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to build advanced control structures within worksheets in Excel. Specifically how to control what a user can input based off of a checkbox in the worksheet. So let's say you have a form and the user is filling it out and then at the bottom they have to accept the terms and conditions. Pretty common thing and we don't want them to be able to enter their name and finish filling out the form until they've done that. So here, if they try to input their name, you must accept the terms in order to proceed. And once you accept the terms, then you can see the little box changes color and you can input your name. Easy peasy. It's pretty cool. Now let me show you how to do it. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Let's start with a fresh clean worksheet and by the end of the tutorial it'll look like the one in the intro. So let us make everything a little bigger. Now this tutorial is going to combine a few different features in order to achieve the desired result. The first of which is a little bit of formatting. So let's go ahead and make our little form. And right here is where we want the user to be able to input a name. In order to get the appearance and the limiting of what the user can input and the checkbox feature, well, we have to use a few different things. One's a form control, one's data validation, and one is conditional formatting. So we're going to combine all three of these things together to make this. Now the first thing we're going to do is to input the checkbox. In order to do that, we need to have the developer tab right here. So let's go to the file menu. Then we want to go down here to options and customize ribbon. And over here on the right, make sure we have main tabs under customize ribbon. It just makes life a little easier. And next to developer, put a check mark. Once you do that, hit OK. Life should be good. Now I've got the Developer tab and go down to the Controls section, Insert. And you have two different things here. You have Form Controls and you have Active X Controls. Now, basically, the essential difference is that a Form Control is going to be easier to use in the worksheet for regular people, but Active X Controls are going to be a little bit more powerful, a little bit easier to use when you're writing out macros. So if you want a macro to access that control, then you should probably use an ActiveX control, or you can use one, it makes life a little bit easier. Here, we're not going to be using VBA or macros, so we're going to use form controls, and in this scenario, it's going to make our life easier. So, checkbox form control. Then, what you do is you just drag and create your little checkbox area. I'm going to click in here, delete that, accept the terms. Put whatever you want in here, doesn't really matter. And now what you want to do, this is a very important, this is how we get the magic to work without a macro or anything like that, is just right click this guy and go to Format Control. Then we go to the Control tab and Cell Link. Click in here and you could type it in, but I find it a little bit easier, safer if you just click this button right here. So it minimizes that and select a cell. We're going to select cell A1. Then hit enter and OK. Now let's click away from the control, any cell in the worksheet, and go and click the checkbox. Notice that it does something in cell A1. Well, let's adjust the formatting a bit. What it does is when it's checked, it outputs true. When it is unchecked, it outputs false. So now we have a cell that returns true and false based off of the check in a checkbox. And you may be able to see now how the magic is going to work because we're going to use the data validation and the conditional formatting combined with this checkbox in order to control not only what you can input down here, but also the appearance of it. So we can quote unquote gray the cell out. It's pretty standard for showing a user that they can't input anything into it. So we can now start to do our data validation. And we'll make the formatting look a little bit more beautiful towards the end. So for data validation, 
That's what controls what a user can input into this cell. And what you need is something that outputs true or false. So all you have to do, since this already outputs true or false, is set it equal to cell A1. Easy peasy. Now you can see that when I change that, that will also change. So what we're going to do is go ahead and select this. It's a simple formula, but when you make more complicated data validation, always, always get it working in the worksheet first, then copy paste it. Now let's go to this cell here where we want to apply our data validation and you can go to the data tab and click the little data validation dude right here or keyboard shortcut alt D L. Now we go to allow, we want custom and formula a one hit. Okay. And now when this is false, if I type something in here, the value doesn't match your data validation restrictions. You can retry and retry and retry. It doesn't matter what you put in here until you put nothing. Also, if I input here and just hit cancel, it will default to what it was before I tried to input anything. So this is great. We have our data validation and it works and everything is happy. So now let us just write down here, create our conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, we want it to basically be like this, but we want it to be the reverse. So when this is unchecked, which will be default, we want to change the formatting of this cell. It's unchecked. I want to show the user they can't put anything in it. So when it is unchecked, it'll equal false. I want it to equal true. So I put the not function around it. And as you can see, not changes false to true or true to false. So we are simply going to reverse that. And you can see now it will always be the opposite. Perfect. So let us select this. And you could put dollar signs around the cell reference if you wanted to. So dollar sign A, dollar sign 1, just to make sure that it never changes. But we don't need to do that in this case. Now let's go to this cell and go to the Home tab over here to Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Then use a formula to determine which cells to format. Go down here paste our formula in, perfect, and go to format. Now here you can choose whatever formatting you want. You could make it a red fill if it's some sort of error, you want it to stand out. But I'm just going to do something like graying out the cell. So maybe this gray or that gray, this one. Then we hit OK and OK. And now you'll see when it is unchecked, we have gray. When it is checked, we have no gray. And now we are almost done. So it works, everything's good, but we want it to be beautiful. So we're going to change the formatting a little bit right now. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep this guy here so you can have everything laid out like this. And then I'm going to create a copy of this worksheet and we'll polish it off there. So that way it'll be easier to access everything, move or copy, create a copy of sheet three. Okie dokie. Let's call this one final. All right, now let's finish it off. We no longer need these guys here. They were just to make sure that we did everything correctly. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Maybe what we'll do up here, if you want to access the checkbox, now that you have it, what you need to do is just right click over it. And then you'll be able to, if you want, go to the edge like this, drag it around, move it, do whatever you want with it. And then from there, of course, you can right click it and you can do whatever you need to do, particularly maybe format the control and change the cell link. Now we're not going to delete this true false because we need this to stay here because all of our formulas rely upon it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select the cell and use one of my little tricks for hiding data, set it the same color as the background. Now no one will ever know it exists. If you want to make sure it's protected so the user can't accidentally delete this, just go to, where are we? View, I always forget which tab it's on to be honest. Review, protect sheet, 
and then they're not going to be able to deal with that cell and just make sure that you unprotect this cell if you're doing that you can unprotect it by right clicking format cells protection and uncheck locked so if you're making a form that's probably a good little thing to do now what you want to do actually is select the cell go to the home tab a little bit more formatting and go to border and do outside borders then make it a little smaller go to the view tab and uncheck grid lines maybe let's make this a little bigger now and this a little smaller and now we have a lovely little box where when I go like this I can input a name do this no name now actually I almost forgot let's go ahead and make a nice little message so let's go back to data validation here alt DL the default message is not very helpful so let's go to the error alert tab and let's change that accept terms you must accept the terms to complete this form okay now let's try to type John Doe you must accept the terms to complete this form awesome here we go perfect so that's all there is to it it may seem kind of complicated but towards the end there a lot of it was just dealing with formatting and formatting is really what's going to polish it off and make it look really nice and neat and special at the end of it so all we really did is to combine three things we combined inputting a form control which we needed to do from the developer tab remember you've got form and ActiveX controls form controls are all we needed for this one and then you need to use data validation which is what limits what a user can input into the cell and combine data validation with conditional formatting so that we have a nice visual cue that you can't input anything into that cell yet so we combined all three of these things to make advanced control structures in the workbook and the final couple things you could do are to protect the worksheet to make sure the user can't change anything and you could attach this to some macros if you wanted to do some really powerful really cool things but that's a little bit beyond this tutorial i hope you liked the tutorial if it was helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials